I started in the minor leagues. When I finished playing in the NBA, I wanted to be a coach. And I started in the minor leagues. That's the only place I could get in. Uh, there, there are not too many places, there weren't too many places at that time for black coaches to get in. Uh, so, you know, you, you did whatever you need to do to try to keep your career going forward. So I didn't even think about really college. You know, I thought about just coaching. I wanted to be a coach more than anything. And that's kind of the way it, it started out. The only thing I can say for young coaches, do it the right way. You know, don't cheat, don't do anything, you know, that you shouldn't be doing. That's the only thing that will kill your career. If you can keep your nose clean, uh, you have a coach who's going to support you and, and not look for you to go out to get the best guy every time, but go out and, and you work honest, then things can happen. So it finally broke open for me at SC. Um, great opportunity. Uh, you know, Mike Garrett was really, really good to me. Uh, uh, brought me in, and uh, you know, I, I came in as as a coach under Charlie Parker, which was great for Charlie to want me there. And uh, Charlie got fired that year, and they put me as the interim coach. And we lost nine games in a row at the end of that season. Mm. And you know, Mike Garrett said he still wanted me to to, to be there. And th th their first look was was Paul Westfall, and uh, you know, I understood that and. Uh, he said, if Paul doesn't want it, then we'll look at you. So I ended up getting the job there, but it was tough to get in. So, Coach, do you think – I'm young in, in the business, and I obviously, I, I, you know, I know you well. I, you know, we're getting recruited by USC. Um, do you think young uh, African-American um, assistants is important for them to become good recruiters or um, help the boss or the head coach win games? Well, you know, the, the coach is not really a coach. And from my standpoint, I, I didn't look for my assistant coaches to win games for me. You know, don't pigeon yourself into being just a assistant coach. And that's what a lot of black coaches become, only assistant coaches, the same way in the NBA. They'll say that a black player, a black coach, can only communicate with, with the players. Well, you know, we have... A brain as well you know we we can coach as well as, as any coach out there coach one of the things you was a, you did you had a great time at usc and for me looking on the outside it was i think back then it was uh maybe you was at sc you had ernie can at oregon you know it's it's hard to get those jobs when you're when you're black you think that it would be easy for you but again it's um people putting people in positions uh, you know, Mike Garrett wanted me at SC. I, I couldn't get SC. Uh, I couldn't get into SC. Uh, Mike Garrett wanted me here. Um, no, no other school was interested in me. No other school was interested in me when I was winning at SC, which is incredible as well. You think that, you know, we go to the Elite Eight, uh, we beat UCLA a few times, we have some 20-game season, that people would be knocking on my door, but nobody knocked on my door. It was really interesting, and to this day, I, I can't phantom what happened. Yes, yeah, it's, it's 2021, and it's, um, for, for young coaches like me, it's, it's, uh, we don't get a chance to see um, a lot of us coaching um, in, in, the, in the head coaching position, especially in the Pac-12, would have been 2021, it's not one black head coach. And so it, it's, it's more like we're becoming like dinosaurs or like phased out before my generation can get a run. So. For me, just staying motivated, and obviously we always uh, talk about you, um, knowing that with the run you had at SC, being an African-American, that's uplifting for me, knowing that one day, um, possible, we can get a, any job, any head coaching job, because it is hard. Um, well, you, you're, you're, you're in the right spot. Uh, I think you're doing the right thing. Uh, you know, there aren't a lot of black coaches out there. A lot of black mm -hmm. coaches don't get the recognition they need to get. Uh, John Chaney was a great, great coach. You never knew that. Uh, John Thompson was a great, great coach. You never really knew that. Uh, Nolan Richardson at Arkansas, who created, you know, the defense of, of every university there is, uh, never got any accolades. You know, Casey Jones, who was a friend of mine who just passed away, won tons of championships uh, in the NBA. You don't hear a lot about him. I mean, that's kind of the way it is. Uh, you have a great future ahead of, ahead of you. Um, you're in a great program. I mean, you're in a big time program. I mean, it's, I was at SC and I thought I had, that was in heaven. Mm -hmm. It was just a great, you know, and we didn't have what you had. We didn't have the new arena or anything like that, but it was heaven just to, to, to get my opportunity to coach. And it will happen for you.
Mm -hmm. uh, you guys keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, talk to coach and, you know, when jobs come up and stuff like that, you know, you know, see where you are. I mean, you know, you, you got to get out there and uh, you just can't sit at mm -hmm. SC the rest of your life. So eventually you're going to have to move on at some point in time. Uh, and it might be a little smaller job, a little lesser job and work yep. your way up. That's what we have to do. The right. African-Americans have to work, to work their way up unless someone put us there. One of the things that um, I have a little group that I put together this past summer, we're trying to get former players who, who just graduate from um, school that don't go to the NBA or don't go to the minor leagues, try to create a program to where they can stay around and, and go to grad school and then get their PhD so they can become in a position to become athletic directors. Um, we have to start creating more athletes <laughs> and in school getting their master's in, in, in and stuff so they can so they can become athletic directors so they can kind of change the hiring um practices and so some of the a lot of athletes come back like desmond is back one of your former players he's getting his uh masters and then hopefully going to get his phd but we need more former players that are just uh right there to to to, to get a higher level education so they can get in those positions of power there's no question about that uh you know i was talking to uh, Tayshawn Prince the other day. I was talking mm -hmm. to Tayshawn in Memphis, and mm -hmm. you know, I was saying we're talking about the NBA, and you know, I'm I'm saying you know the African Americans got to own something. Mm -hmm. If you don't own a team, then you're still with that mentality that we've had 200 years ago. You're still working, right. you know, and you're still owned by somebody basically mm -hmm. um, until times change, where where we get out and be more Michael Jordans that buy a team then we can put, we can start, you know, working a little better and put more African-Americans in different spots uh, of, of potential where they are, you know, more athletic directors that are black, more presidents that are black at universities, more alumni that are black that are donating that have a say-so in what goes on. And right now we don't, we don't really have that. Well, coach, I ain't going to hold you, man. I really, really appreciate you coming on, man. And, uh, I always love to talk to you on the phone. I get that wisdom and, and, and you, from I, I hate you being at SC now because you should have been there years ago playing for me. That's what you should have been. I know. What did I, I want, Jason Hart? You're a good player, but more so than anything else, you're a good guy. And that's that's a good thing I can say about you. I love your smile, man. And uh, you, you have a lot of respect for the older guys that's been around you. You're a good guy, man. You're a good guy. Appreciate and I, I appreciate knowing you. You know, you and I call each other and yep. say hello every now and then. Just and, and not a lot, of, a lot of guys do that. So I thank you for that, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Continue to be blessed. Stay safe, COVID-free, man, and I'll see you soon. My man.